In these brief episodes, we've been examining actual original artifacts that defy evolutionary theory. At the Creation Evidence Museum, we've accepted the challenge offered by some of the leading spokesmen of evolutionary dogma of our generation. For instance, Professor David H. Milne of Evergreen State College, Olympia, Washington, and Professor Stephen D. Schaefersman of the Department of Geology, Rice University, Houston, Texas, admitting in writing that if we could find human and dinosaur footprints in the same rock layer, such an occurrence, if verified, would seriously disrupt conventional interpretations of biological and geological history and would support the doctrines of creationism and catastrophism. Notice they gave biological and geological history a positive account and gave creation and catastrophe an ism account. However, if we could accept their challenge, meet their challenge, and defy evolutionary theory, we remove the ism from creation and the ism from catastrophism. Well, Professor A. E. Wildersmith, who had five earned PhDs, carried the implications even further. One authentic man track found in the same stratum as one authentic brontosaurus or dinosaur track throws out 100 years of evolutionary teachings. It is sufficient to bring the whole Darwinistic theory down and revolutionize all biology today. Is it possible to do so? We've examined actual artifacts beginning in the Cambrian, that is, assigned an age of 550 million to 650 million years in age. But we have a human footprint, a sandal print in that lower area, meaning that the entire geologic column evolutionarily assumed to be 650 million years of progressive evolution was actually a demonstration of the sedimentary deposits during the worldwide flood approximately 4,500 years ago. So we've examined evidence at the bottom man was present. We've found a cup in coal. We have those actual artifacts. That coal supposedly 395 million years in age, but it has to be recent. All of this has to be recent. But central to the issue is the Glenrose controversy, the Paluxy controversy, that man and dinosaur lived contemporaneously. Tracks were found before the Depression. And during the 1930s, one enterprising individual, because there were footprints of dinosaurs and footprints of human beings found in the Biloxi Basin, actually carved a few of both. Therefore, when we examine human footprints among the dinosaur footprints, evolutionists say, Everyone knows the human footprints were carved and they hang up the telephone. Not so quickly. In 2000, July of 2000, Alvis Delk, a, an amateur paleontologist, amateur archaeologist, discovered in the vicinity of our excavations a human footprint all five digits, distinctively human, having been invaded by an Acrocanthosaurus dinosaur footprint who stepped on, pushed forward, and actually moved some of the consolidated mud under the human footprint forward into the print itself. So not only do we have in the same rock stratum dinosaur footprints and human footprints, in the same rock itself, this is the actual, original, authentic print, a man-made print and a dinosaur print. Spiral CAT scan technology has been applied. The compression is very distinct under, around, and ahead of each of these prints. Thus, we've accepted the challenge. Thus, we've demonstrated that man and dinosaur did live contemporaneously. This removes the ism from catastrophism and the ism from creationism and leaves the absolute truth of creation by the hand of God himself and catastrophe during a worldwide flood. These are actual original artifacts that defy evolution and support creation.
creation.